and gals and my fellow Vensies, welcome back to another day of Vens. Today is going to kind of be a quick video because I don't really have a lot of time. During the Halloween season, both American Disney parks have separate Halloween celebrations. In Disney World, you have Mickey's Not-So-Scary Halloween Party. This is where you'll find the Hocus Pocus show I talked about last year, uh, Boo to You Halloween Parades, and the fireworks display. But in California, it's done a bit differently. The fireworks Halloween Screams, which was sort of a rehashed Hollow Wishes, which is still a really good show, by the way. I think I mentioned that last year as well, uh, is in the Disneyland Park. But the main crux of the party is actually in California Adventure, just across the way. Here, they celebrate the Oogie Boogie Bash. It's a separate ticketed event, just like Not So Scary. But the main draw of this particular event is specialty character treat trails. These are treat trails that feature a character who is not really seen all that often. For example, this year, for the first time, they brought out Judge Doom from Who Framed Roger Rabbit and probably traumatized a lot of kids. Granted, not me, because I never really found him all that scary, but, well, I mean, just look at the reaction when he brings out the shoe. <laughs> and while I know we are nowhere near the end of the Halloween season yet, I already kind of want to look to the future of the 2024 Oogie Boogie Bash and kind of give my draft picks for who I think will stay, who I think will get swapped out, and if they do get swapped out, who I would like to see them get swapped out with. Now, the only caveat to the choices that I had is that I want to try to keep it within reason to who's already there. You'll see, I'll, I'll explain more what I mean by that as we go down the list. Which, speaking which, let's start off with number one, which is Ernesto de la Cruz. Now, Ernesto de la Cruz from Coco, I believe, debuted in the 2022 Oogie Boogie Bash. And he got rave reviews, which is honestly completely deserved. This makeup job that they did is freaking incredible. And while, yes, I do think there was an ulterior motive behind it, because the Disney Treasure, the newest Disney cruise ship, has recently announced that Coco will be getting a dining experience there, so I wouldn't be all that shocked if Ernesto made an appearance. I also think they put a lot of money, clearly, into this makeup job, that they're not going to let it be a two-year wonder. So I think Ernesto de la Cruz will just squeak by for a third year in a row. Now for the next one... This character, I think, is in sort of the Hollywoodland backlot area. They've had a couple of shows there. I think it's near the Hyperion, but it's not, like, adjacent to the Hyperion. That's currently where Judge Doom is. But in that area, it has a lot of screens. They've done a couple of media events there. They, like I said, they had a couple of shows there. Drawn to the Magic was there at one point. And then a Mickey beatbox dancing show, which, uh... Oh, so yeah, the less said about that one, the better. But in this area currently resides uh, Cruella, Emma Stone's Cruella from, well, Cruella. And while I do still like the movie, I do think it is time for her to go. Because you have to remember, she was put there for promotion for the movie. You're not really promoting Cruella anymore. So, I'm going to be keeping this within the realm of live-action remakes. And while I'm sure a bunch of you probably expected me to choose live-action Jafar, no. Your hands! Yes, no more, Master! Now your hands! How about my foot? I also kind of thought, wouldn't it be cool to have sort of an Ernesto-style sort of reveal? A character that makes you kind of go, how are they doing that? Holy shit. And for me, if we're keeping it within the live-action remake territory, and we want kind of a, that reaction, how about one of the most popular villains who, by and large, has never had a meet-and-greet? A character who I'm sure would love to make a deal with some poor, unfortunate souls. That's right. 
I'm talking about bringing the live-action Melissa McCarthy Ursula into that area. I think the screens will work really good with sort of bringing the underwater and her lair sort of set theme to that space. I think it would be kind of easy to swap her in and out. And yeah, I also just think it would be kind of cool to see Ursula in the parks finally, especially as a face character. <laughs> Moving on to my number three pick. These are in no particular order, by the way. Uh, obviously, it's Oogie Boogie Bash. You have to be able to see Oogie Boogie. So I think Oogie Boogie stays in the animation building. I don't really see a reason for him to move or for him to get replaced with anything. It's his party, after all. Now, for Avengers Campus, we currently have Agatha Harkness from WandaVision, representing sort of the Disney plus Marvel side of things. And while Agatha is still a very popular character, and while, yes, they do have the Agatha House of Harkness, Agatha Coven of Chaos, Agatha whatever we choose to name the show this week, coming soon to Disney plus TM, I'm going to go with, I think, Agatha again, kind of like with Cruella, was put there to advertise WandaVision. Nobody's really talking about WandaVision anymore, so I think Agatha, while she is popular, I think it might be time for her to go back to Westview. And while this isn't necessarily a recent show, for, for this area, I have two choices. One is kind of a pipe dream, and two I think is slightly more realistic. Let's go with the pipe dream first. Pipe dream is we already have that Hulk costume, right? They they put a lot of R&D into making the Hulk. We did just get confirmation recently that the Avengers e-ticket is still on its way coming. And in that Avengers e-ticket, the villain of that ride is King Thanos. So, King Thanos in Avengers Campus for Oogie Boogie Bash. Now again, the one gripe that a lot of people had, including myself, of the Hulk is that he was in the Avengers time suit suit, and that's mostly because it has a helmet which would disguise the fact that while he is piping Mark Ruffalo sound alike audio, it's not like a puppet, he's not talking. And you really couldn't do that with King Thanos. So unless they could figure out a way to actually make it be puppeteered live, King Thanos, again, is a pipe dream. What I think is slightly more realistic is keeping within the Thanos theme, in a sense, of the Infinity Stone Killmonger from What If. Now, again, I know not a lot of people are talking about What If. There is supposedly a season two on the way. But if, you know, people love Black Panther... People love Killmonger. People lost their minds when he showed up in Wakanda Forever. And people love the Infinity Stones. They love that side of the Marvel Universe. Why not? They did bring Zombie Cap uh, from What If out for, you know, a couple of Boogie Boogie Bashes. Let's see Killmonger. Now, moving on to a couple of other tree trails. Characters that I think are going to probably be relatively safe. Uh, Madam Mim, who I think premiered last year at the 2022 Oogie Boogie Bash, I think she stays, uh, I think she stays for at least one more year, because she is, she is kind of an off-the-wall, sort of off-the-beaten-path kind of character. They did probably invest some money, and again, to the prosthetics and to her costume, to just let it go after two years, I think would be kind of silly. So yeah, I think she survives one more year. And I think who also survives one more year in that similar area, yeah, Judge Doom. Judge Doom has proven to be, for at least from what I've heard, exceptionally popular. And I don't think Disney quite really expected that. I mean, I'm sure they expected him to be popular, but not as popular as he is. Which only really makes me excited that we could possibly get more Roger Rabbit stuff in the parks. <laughs> Now, this one, this next character is in, I think, the wilderness area, the wilderness sort of Red Creek Trail area, I believe is what it's called. I'm more familiar with Florida. Uh, but who originally used to be in this spot was the Evil Queen from Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Then, I think, 
at the same time, I think, again, I think of the 2022 Oogie Boogie Bash. Again, I could be wrong. They chose to swap out the Evil Queen for uh, Mother Gothel from Tangled. And I'm sorry. I know I'm probably going to get people who love this character on my case. It's not that I don't love Mother Gothel. I just think she's, as a, as a character for this event, I just think she's incredibly boring. She just doesn't have a lot that she can do right? Literally, they just have her on a stage surrounded by the flower with the knife in her hand that she used to stab Flynn. That's it. Judge Doom gets to kill a tomb shoe. You know, Madame Mim gets to be just off the wall crazy. Even characters who are there right now, like Sid from Toy Story or Agatha, Agatha has her theme song that will play on rotation. Sid just gets to roast people. Hey, you two, did you drop your glasses? It looks like you lost your vision. Again, I just think, by and large, uh, Mother Gothel is just kind of a boring character. Which is why I am opting to replace her with one of, again, two options. From around that same sort of new era of Disney animation. One is Bowler Hat Guy from Meet the Robinsons, just because I think, just like with Mad Madam Mim, he is just crazy incarnate. However, if we want even crazier than Mad Madam Mim... And a character that would probably be very popular, Yzma from The Emperor's New Groove. <laughs> Alright, for the final two characters that I want to talk about very quickly, uh, one I think is, they're both from the Paradise Pier area, one I think is staying just because unless they move this tree trail, I really don't see who else they could put here. It's in the newly reopened uh, San Francisco area, it's yokai. I find him boring, but if they're gonna keep the tree trail area here, unless Big Hero 6 gets another movie, or they try to take a villain from the animated show, who else really are they gonna put there? Moving on to the actual Paradise Pier area, this is where Sid currently resides. And while I love Sid, and I think Sid is arguably one of the best characters they've had in Oogie Boogie Bash, and it's also probably been one of the easiest, because he's just a kid, a guy in a t-shirt, jeans, and shoes. If they're going to replace Sid, and again, we want an Ernesto de la Cruz-style reaction, so we want to keep it within the Pixar universe, I don't know who else you can get a reaction like from that, especially considering with the Ingredicoaster. But let's bring Syndrome from The Incredibles. The area that Sid's currently in is kind of a half circle. Very easy to stick an Omnidroid into that area. Syndrome, I think, could also opt do the same exact stuff that Sid does, which is make fun of the guests. Kind of be an evil version of Edna Mode. And I I don't know. I mean, it, it, it would, I would just like to see it. I guess at the end of the day with a lot of these, I would kind of just like to see it. <laughs> That's my list, but now I want to hear from you. Write in the comments down below if you have any character suggestions. I would love to read those. And until tomorrow, guys, gals, and my fellow Vedsies, I will see you tomorrow.